Robert Sentamu Chagulanyi, also known as Bobby Wine, a Ugandan member of parliament and a mega artist, and Mar Sebuja Katende, the Ugandan ambassador to the United States, for in potential and extraordinary. I have to say, gentlemen, that I'm profoundly honored and exceedingly humbled to have the opportunity to host you on Straight Talk Africa. It's a pleasure, Shaka, and I also salute you, fellow Ugandans back home and uh, fellow citizens of the world across the globe. You're most welcome. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Shaka, for inviting us, and uh, greetings to the viewers. I must uh, congratulate you, Ambassador Katende, that uh, you are the first Ugandan ambassador to come to this show since perhaps 2001, the last ambassador on this show being former U Ugandan ambassador to the United States, Edith Sempara Bafakulera. I apologize on their behalf. You're most welcome, and I certainly look forward to doing business with you. Thank you. You're most welcome. Let me come to you immediately, Bobby. You've been on this show before, and uh, it is a pleasure, of course, uh, having you for the second time, except, of course, this time seems to be under very different circumstances. You came on a clutch, on clutches. Why? Well, <coughs> I came on clutches because I was in deep pain. I am thankful to God and indeed to the doctors back home and here in the United States that have been treated well and I'm graduating day by day. Um, that right, right now I'm only using a walking stick and being the strong man that I am, I hope to soon be on my two feet. What happened to you? Well, <clears throat> um, it shouldn't be news to you, Shaka, and neither is it news to anybody out there that I was brutally tortured you will be surprised, I'm sure there are millions in the audience who probably have not heard about that. Yeah, um, it is not something that I should be proud of. I was uh, brutally tortured by a section of the Ugandan military called the Special Forces Command, and this is the section of the military that is charged with guarding the president. I was beaten, uh, kept on handcuffs. A lot of despicable things um, were done to me, but I'm here. And I'm still alive. You're most welcome. Uh, Thank you. From what I have actually read and um, what I have seen, uh, the Ugandan government says, on the contrary, <coughs> you were never tortured. Those are their words, not mine. Well, it's such a shame. But again, it's not new for the Ugandan government to do something and uh, disown it. I mean, I was not tortured alone. I was tortured. I uh, was arrested brutally along with the Honorable Francis Zake, who is still in uh, intensive care in India. I was tortured along with uh, a lady called Asiro. Uh, they, by the time I left Uganda, she was still passing blood. I was tortured along with uh, a gentleman called Atiku Shaban, who sustained a permanently broken back, and uh, 33 other people, including four members of parliament. Um, the Human Rights Commission, the Human Rights, Uganda Human Rights Commission visited um, much in the barracks where I was being incarcerated and indeed uh, wrote a report uh, about the condition that I was in when they found me. Bobby so, Wine, no journalist perhaps would be worth his thought, frankly, if he didn't ask you the question, why? That is a question that probably should have gone to the government of Uganda. We have the Ugandan ambassador yeah. here. He will Why post, uh, would a book. Ugandan be brutally arrested? Why would a Ugandan be tortured? Why would a Ugandan be citizen be framed with possession of guns only later for the um, claims to be dropped by the government? I also still wonder why, now that we are with the ambassador of Uganda, maybe he will explain to us why so many Ugandans are being tortured, are wrongfully arrested, and indeed killed. Maybe he's in a better position to answer why. Mr. My Mr. brother, Ambassador Katende, I know that uh, you were not in Uganda, 
you were here with me, but you obviously represent the government of Uganda. Exactly. How do you respond to this? Thank you very much, uh, 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 Dr. Shaka. And Without uh, a clinic, of course, uh, because you might mislead the patients to come to me. Yeah, I, I, I am glad to be here with the Honorable here. Actually, as ambassador, I took the responsibility to look him up because I saw him coming on clutches. I even went to the hospital to, to check whether, because as ambassador, I'm responsible for, for the welfare of all people who visit in the U.S. and those who reside in it. But I was told that he had been uh, examined and discharged. So I said, well, mm -hmm. it means it's okay. But of course, since then, I saw him with two clutches. He's now with this walking stick, meaning that uh, things are improving, as he says. My only problem has been uh, the purpose of his mission. Uh, and I take it that it is double. Hmm. Is he on medical, but also for political uh, activities? But before which you, is you not go, a crime. Before you go any further, crime. Mr. Ambassador, yes. do you have any doubt uh, whatsoever that uh, you are probably looking at somebody who may in fact have been tortured? Okay, let me first state this, Dr. Sally. <coughs> first. There has been a lot of uh, information circulating on the media that there is uh, a lot of crisis in Uganda. I want to assure all our viewers that there is no crisis in Uganda. The country is stable and uh, only what we are experiencing are isolated acts of criminality like what happened after the elections in uh, Arua. Secondly, Uganda remains committed to the tenets of democracy, rule of law, and respect for human rights. On the issues which the Honorable here has alluded to, they are before the court, and the court will pronounce itself on them. And here we are guided by the rule of sub -judice. But let me say this. Uganda does not condone torture. And uh, whatever issues the Honorable has and then the others of his association, any issues they have will be pronounced on in court. Uganda has functioning institutions and I'm sure the Honorable will agree with me that he's benefiting from some of them. He's now here on bail. Uh, and uh, and uh, he, will, he, will, he, will, he will continue to, to observe the due process. On the alleged torture, uh, as a principle, the torture was one of the very reasons the government in Uganda came into being because of past uh, activities by the governments of the day. Secondly, Uganda is a signatory to the United Nations Convention Against Tokyo. In fact, it is the NRM government that ratified this charter in 1987. Thirdly, we have a Uganda Human Rights Commission. The chairman of the Human Rights Commission visited the Honorable and uh, he will 
produce a report. The commission is an independent institution. It is not influenced by government and we will look forward to its report. Unfortunately, Mr. Ambassador, time happens not to be our best ally. Yes, yes. But otherwise, I was going to tell you that the UPDF Board of Survey has instituted a, a, an inquiry. The U, U, Uganda Police Force has also instituted an inquiry. Any security forces that might have committed uh, commissions will we'll face the, the, the consequences. We'll give you an opportunity later to talk a little bit more about that. Before pausing for a short break, we want to remind you that Story Talk Africa is now streaming live on Facebook. To watch our show, just enter the keyword Story Talk Africa and don't forget to share it with your friends. We are on Twitter, follow us at VOA Shaka. That's VOA Shaka, and join in on today's discussion with your questions and comments. Don't forget to use the hashtag VOA Barbie Wine, and we'll air some of your segments later in the show. We'll be right back with you, so please, don't go away. We are able to touch on the things that are important to people on an everyday basis. We hope that our viewers are getting inspired when they watch our show. They're getting a view of the world from a different perspective, things that perhaps are not in their immediate vicinity. Today, I could put in on the show something that is a little different, a little unique, and this gives me that uh, you know, inspiration to come to work. could be French, English, Portuguese, Bantu, Arabic, it is the beat, the African beat that counts, the beat does all the translations, it cuts across all languages and gives us the understanding that this is the African beat, it is so distinct and adhesive, it binds us together, African beat on the voice of America, for more information visit our website at www.voanews.com slash African beat. You're welcome back to Straight Talk Africa, coming to you live from Washington. Let me come to you, uh, Bobby Weiner. You heard uh, Ambassador Katende uh, essentially really saying that uh, as far as the government is concerned, you were not tortured. I have also, in fact, uh, uh, read uh, that uh, a one colleague of yours uh, in the artistic world called Bebe Kool, Moses Sali, son of veteran politician Vidandi Sali, has actually said for the record that whatever wounds or symptoms that uh, you allege are on you are fake. Now, let me, I've done my homework a bit and uh, I was reading about torture. Listen to the definition of this, the action or practice of inflicting severe pain on someone as a punishment or to force them to do or say something or for the pleasure of the person inflicting the pain. It can also, uh, in terms of synonym, it can also be referred to abuse as abuse, maltreatment, persecution, or sadism. And according to the Oxford Dictionary, which is very accessible to a lot of Ugandans who went to school and the Commonwealth, um, it says, uh, uh, which is probably more accessible, of course, to Ugandans than to the Commonwealth, it says uh, uh, torture is defined as the action or practice of inflicting severe pain on someone as a punishment or in order to force them to do or say something. Is that something that uh, actually happened to you? Well, first of all, I will not address anybody else who I'm not next to, um, but I'm so glad the ambassador is here with me. 
You see, I hold Ambassador Amul Katende in very high regard. I've uh, read about him. I've seen him since I was growing up, and uh, I think he's a very intelligent person. However, like Nobat Mao once noted, that if you're paid to be a fool, then your intelligence ceases to matter. I'm not saying our ambassador is paid to be a fool. He could probably be paid to lie or to be ignorant or maybe to be blind. Um, I'd like to bring this to his attention. I live in Uganda. I've grown up in Uganda, in ordinary Uganda. So for him to be on this platform and say that uh, Uganda is not in a crisis, Uganda is at peace, is really disappointing. I mean, it is rep misrepresenting the Ugandans because Uganda is not just a piece of land or trees or lakes. Uganda is the people of Uganda. Um, in a Uganda where one cannot even drive a car with uh, window screens down because of fear of being attacked, by miserable, desperate young people, that is not a Uganda which is not at crisis. But however, coming back um, to the torture, uh, Mr. Ambassador, you are next to me, and I'm sure right now you can see my skin still peeling off out of the beatings. I'm sure you can look at my nose and see the broken bone. I'm sure you can look at my eye and see the, the, the scars. So this is not hypothetic talk. This is realistic things. Um, I will understand the ambassador because maybe he lives in the comfort of Washington. So it is okay for him to get communications from high profile people in Uganda, especially those that hope to paint a rosy picture about our country. But I'm here to speak for the millions upon millions of Ugandans, especially the young people of Uganda who consist over 85 percent, and I'm here to represent their reality. Now, he said, yeah, there are just, um, you know, limited uh, cases of criminality here and there. I would like to assert that you are right in that area. However, the criminality is not being perpetrated by the ordinary citizens. It is actually carried out by the armed forces. I'm sure you've been watching on the, screen, the screens. You've seen the, the military police and uh, uh, the soldiers and the police itself brutalizing um, innocent citizens. I mean, if that's not criminality, I wonder what it is. You say the court will pronounce itself about um, a few things. It has pronounced itself. I was brutally arrested from my hotel room, and the first claim that the government brought was that they found uh, two machine guns in my room and um, rounds of ammunition. Ten days later, after torturing me, after mistreating me in military incarceration, which was illegal, I must say, the government, out of the blue, dropped the charges. And um, was it yesterday when I heard that the guns have gone missing. So I don't know what the ambassador has to say about that. Um, Uganda does not condone torture. Yes, because Uganda is Ugandans, according to me. However, it's in the same Uganda that I would like to tell you that many people have been publicly tortured. Shaka, we are talking about torture today. Maybe the world has... Uh, uh, rose up to uh, as reason his voice now because maybe a celebrity was tortured. I'm humbled to see that my case has attracted a wild appeal. But I want you to know that the Muslim clerics, we've seen them and the ambassadors seen them coming to court with bans. You've seen many people who have been whose manhoods have been crushed. You have seen the mayor of Kamwenge who was beaten and his hands uh, he, he was even rotting, all that is torture. And if it's not torture, I wonder what uh, you call it. Oh, yes, Uganda, you said Uganda has functioning institutions. But I wonder what kind of institutions you are talking about. In Uganda, power resides within the presidency. That is where all decisions are, make, uh, are made. That is why even the police officers will arrest you, and then afterwards they ask you why they are arresting you. When I was brutally arrested, um, 
at the, uh, at the airport, even after court cleared me to go outside Uganda for specialized treatment, the police arrested me. And when I asked them uh, where they're taking me, they didn't know where they were taking me. They were waiting for orders. So that is what I call total institutional death. Until we have our institutions back and they're functioning the way they were functioning, you know, maybe we can say they're live institutions. You talked about um, the Uganda Human Rights Commission and said they're going to come up uh, with a report. I have news for you, Mr. Ambassador. That report came out and it clearly narrated the state in which they found me. So I request that you do your homework and find out the real facts that are going on in Uganda. Mr. Ambassador, yeah. how do you respond to that? In fact, there are some critics who have, just, who have actually come up and said mm. the Ugandan government, as it's constituted, actually does have what they call a trust deficit. How do you react to that? First of all, Mr. Shaka, let me make a correction. I did not sit on this platform to say he was not tortured. I didn't say that. What I said is that... I take your apology. What I said is that whatever happened to him is being investigated. By who? I, I told you, UPDF uh, uh, is, is investigating, UPC, U, U, Uganda Police Force... The people that, in fact, he says are responsible for torturing just, him? Just wait. The matter is in the court. Look, torture is a technical matter. The Honorable Bobby Wine cannot come here and say, look at my nose, broken. How do I? I, I, I I'm not a doctor. All that will have to surface in the, in, the, in the courts of law. Now, you said that the report has come out. Fine. That's okay. The report, whatever it is, it will be respected. I'm, 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 I'm not saying that I, if it doesn't say this or that, it, 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 it will not come out. It's, then, the other thing you are talking about is uh, on the criminality. You see, what is happening in Uganda is the opposition politicians those who have another view, those who have failed to convince Ugandans to give them enough votes to go into government, they think that the best option is to cause instability and emerge from that instability. That is the problem. But I want to assure you that the government is fully in control and anybody who disturbs the peace, the law is there. And uh, we must have trust in our institutions. Honorable Chagulani, you are here because court said you are given bail. You have to respect that. Eh? You will go through the due process. It is there. There is no virtue. And the pronouncement of the courts will be respected. You talked of Muslim clerics. Yes, there have been so many... Uh, 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 cases. Uh, no, no, no. So many cases, like any other world. You have people who commit crime. You have people who get arrested. Torture. You have got people who, 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 who appear in courts. These cases are in courts. Many of, 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 of the investigations are going on and the assurance is that the institutions are doing their job. There are challenges, yes. You have, you have these criminal activities continuing, but something is being done about them. They are not condoned by government. And I assure you, they will be termed. There is a time in 1987 when the country was rocked with, uh, with, with grenades. A lot of grenades were killing people in the cities. 
And uh, people thought that that was the end of Uganda. But government was able to nab those criminals, and that issue was resolved. This too is a bubble. It will go. The most important thing is the people of Uganda have the voice. The owner of Chagurani says he talks on behalf of Ugandans. That has to be demonstrated. The, the people you talk on behalf of are people of Chadondo East because there is evidence they elected you. So is President Museveni. Over 60 percent elected him. He can. Are you sure? Yes, of course. That's why you are here. Otherwise, you would have resigned from Parliament if you did not respect the the, the, the democratic experiment, experiment we have. Mr. Ambassador, unfortunately, there is no democracy in Studio 47. <laughs> if the producer tells me to go, I have to go. <clears throat> you are tuned in to Straight Talk Africa. We'll have more of a conversation in a moment. So please don't go away because we'll be right back with you. Like Voice of America on Facebook. Follow VOA on Twitter. Join VOA on our YouTube channel. Like, follow, join VOA. Today's youth are not just the next generation of African leaders, they are today's leaders. And this is the time to invest in them. Today, not tomorrow. So let's connect, let's engage with each other on issues that will transform our societies. Innovation, leadership, entrepreneurship, things that you're doing to move the continent forward to make you the greatest generation that Africa has known. It's up front every Wednesday, 1730 UTC, right here on The Voice of America. A reminder that we appreciate all of the audience feedback. Straight Talk Africa streams live every Wednesday on Facebook and to watch us live on your mobile device, just download the VOA mobile app. Now let's look at what's on tap for next week's program. On the next Straight Talk Africa, a discussion on the African Capacity Building Foundation. The African Union's specialized agency for capacity development has coordinated programs worth $700 million across 48 countries since 1991. We'll talk about the foundation's steps to develop the skills required for the continent's economic transformation on the next Straight Talk Africa. And today we are talking about the current democratic challenges in Uganda. Our distinguished guests are Robert Sentamu Chagulanyi, also known as Bobby Wine, a Ugandan member of parliament and musical artist, and Mar Sebuja Katende, the Ugandan ambassador to the United States, plain potential and extraordinary. I have to say, gentlemen, uh, that once again I'm profoundly honored and exceedingly humbled to have the opportunity to host you on Straight Talk Africa. You're most welcome. Let me come to you, uh, Mr. Ambassador. You, you talked about uh, very interesting things about uh, the government responsibilities. You talked about uh, how Ugandan president was, has a mandate uh, because he was elected and all kind of stuff. What about the increasing call for the issue of trust deficit? Here is a president who in 2001, correct me if I am wrong, he basically appealed to the Ugandan voters to give him an opportunity and support him to serve a second and last constitutional allowable term 
so that he could com accomplish three very important things. One was, for example, to professionalize the army. The other was to secure a regional economic market. And the last was to choose a successor. This was 2001. We are in 2018. And you know what has happened since then? In 2005, you had, in a sense, what you would call the constitutional political shifting of the goalposts. Term limits were essentially thrown out. Last year, if I remember correctly, the age cap on the constitution was removed. In effect, leaving an individual to establish a presidential monarch. This is a man who came in 1986, was very much loved by probably not only Ugandans, probably the entire continent, because he said the problem of Africa or Uganda for that matter, was not about the African people or the Ugandan people. It was the African leaders who overstay in power. How do you react to that? Well, thank you very much, Mr. Shaka. First of all, Uganda is governed by a constitution. In fact, the constitution is the supreme law of the land. And that constitution has provisions. It has provisions governing all, as all facets of, of, of social economic endeavor in the country, including sections that provide for its amendment. Now, the referendum, the, 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 the change of term limits was subjected to the people of Uganda. To the members of parliament? The members of parliament are representatives of the people of Uganda. But who received, each of, each of those people who you are talking about who voted for the change of uh, that term is, limits, yes. who received each of them from what I saw, about three thousand dollars. No, no, no. And no. the president you, you himself, in fact, said uh, the money was co for quote unquote facilitation. Doctor, someone Shaka, might say bribe. Doctor Shaka, you have no evidence. The evidence we have. Well, I'm a member is, of parliament. Uh, I can give wait, evidence. Wait, I am also a land person. Look, what, 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 what is true is that the parliament varied that provision on behalf of the people. There were sections of people in the parliament that did not support it. That's good enough. We practice democracy. You practice democracy? Yes. The president in That's fact is on record it? saying, I brought you democracy. Wait. What type we, of democracy are we talking about? We have a parliament that has all shades of political interest. We have the, 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 the Honorable Chagulani, we have uh, FBC, we have UPC, we have NRM, we have DP. Recently we even added on JEMA. So we have a parliament and it has to be respected. If not, then the Honorable Chagulani, when he lives here, should resign. You understand? Now, the, what, what the, about that, uh, uh, Bobby Wine? If in fact you believe that there is no democracy in Uganda, then why are you in fact participating in parliament? Uh, thank you, Shaka. First and foremost, like I, uh, I said at the beginning of this show, I will quote Nobat Mao for the second time when he said that if you are paid to be stupid, your intelligence seems to matter. Even the days of Idi Amin, we had very intelligent people, very knowledgeable people, paid to do very, very pathetic things. I'm very, very disappointed to see a land person, a person that I hold in high regard. I'm very sure what he speaks now 
he regrets when he lives here. I'm very sure he does not represent you. I mean, you are talking about legality. But just yesterday, a gentleman called Eddie Mutwe had been kidnapped by the soldiers. And for so long, when the soldiers were denying his whereabouts, a court order was issued, but it was not respected. When how I how did you know they were Ugandan soldiers? Well, they were Ugandan soldiers because they are the ones who, who presented him at the end of the day. Our soldiers, the ones we pay to not rebels. us. Not rebels. Ugandan soldiers. Not Bayai. Not Bayai. I get so disturbed um, um, when I hear elderly leaders talking to us and quoting 1987, 1960, 1940. That is not relevant. It's not in our reality. We have a reality, and we are the majority of Ugandans. And you cannot continue working on the periphery. You've got to uh, look at issues the way they are. Um, you just quoted him very well. You told him that the president of Uganda said in 2001 that he wanted one more time to professionalize the army. But indeed, he wanted to personalize the army. We probably misheard him. And yes, since then, the army and indeed the police that have been charged with guarding Ugandans have been playing politics. Instead. I see a lot of generals. And in fact, uh, to their credit, uh, they have attended a lot of advanced courses around the world. Thank so you very much. he probably, in fact, may have accomplished that. Yeah, he may have accomplished that. But and he probably he also not... accomplished number two, which was securing a regional economic market, which is the East African community. Yeah, but Shaka, look what at this. What about choosing the successor? Is it possible that, in fact, he I might mean, have chosen Yoweri Kaguta Museveni? Uganda is not a kingdom. Succeed him? Yeah, he might have cloned himself, you know. But Uganda is not a kingdom. Uganda is a republic. And our president is the same president that has been changing faces every now and then. Some of us were young. I was only four years when President Museven came to power. But when I read his, the books, they say they're going to be in power for only five years. And the spaces have been changing year in, year out, until the Constitution barred him. And yes, the Constitution mm -hmm. was completely disrespected. I'm a member of parliament. I was in the parliament when the army invaded parliament and beat everybody, breaking um, some of them. Um, uh, Honorable Zaka was treated here in America. Honorable Nambose has never recovered, and she might never recover because she sustained a broken spinal cord. Bobby that is Wine, the army that you're talking Wine, about. That I'm is afraid I should inform you that uh, Mr. Ambassador, to some degree, is right in the sense that uh, the Constitution has certain provisions that you could actually call upon to amend it because it is a living document. But does the Constitution also have provisions that allow the president to bribe members of parliament to change the Constitution or to amend it? I'm glad now, you want to now, ask that question. Yes. Now, uh, uh, Dr. Shadi, you, that issue you are bringing up of bribery, he called it facilitation. You have got to prove it. You have no proof. I can help prove it. You are paid 29 million uh, shillings, wait. which I return. For, uh, just just wait. for information. First of all, let me say this at this show. This is a dignified studio. Uh, VOA is very dignified. It is watched all of Africa. And I think it is not proper for the honorable to come and insinuate and say, I'm stupid, I'm paid to be stupid. That cannot be. Secondly, uh, I think when that uh, you probably owe the ambassador an apology. Well, if he misheard him, I would like to reassert the quotation. I said that I am quoting the honorable Nobat Mao, who once said that if you are paid to be stupid, your intelligence ceases to matter. What, ab what about perhaps being paid to be economic with the truth? Well, I like the decency of uh, your words, but I wouldn't want to change somebody's quote because I am quoting somebody who's anyway, living. I forgive okay. the honorable. I forgive the honorable. Thank you. Now, on the, on the issue of delving into the past. I think 
we have to, we are not coming from nothing. Uganda he did not start when, when, uh, when the Honorable here became a member of parliament. Uganda is all. We have got a constitution that was not made yesterday. And we have institutions that have been building o over time. Now, all those things about um, the, the things the Honorable has referred to, uh, the concerns about uh, security situation relating to some individuals. We have rule of law. I think it's better to respect this. What about others who, in fact, say it is rule by law? No, 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 no. We have courts. In fact, we do have courts. The same that are being... Um, the same that by granted the... you bail to be here in the United States for whatever reasons. We do have institutions. You see, Dr. Shaka, when matters do not of favor those who are opposed to government, mm -hmm. then they are illegal, they are wrong. When the things are favoring them, like for example, when he came to parliament, mm -hmm. it's okay. What about the but government? But I have challenged him. What about After the government? After year, he should resign. What about the government? In fact, somebody once said mm. that probably the best description for your boss, mm. the Ugandan president, mm. is that he suffers from a disease mm. of having a pathological fear mm. of fair competition. That he actually likes to compete against people whose hands are tied behind their backs and their legs are tied together. Let me tell you the truth. I have, uh, I was denied the opportunity to elect in my life until recently. And since then I make sure that I vote. President of seven, let facts be told, he has support. What you see here are these, uh, the, the political leaders who do not believe in him fomenting disturbances in the towns. And it's true, even Kampala, Kampala, Kampala the president got something like 40%. 40, 40 the opposition took more. And that, let's say they took 60%. Mm. That's formidable. Uh, you, you can mobilize, the Honorable here can mobilize that, let's say, 30, 30%, 50% of those voted. He can mobilize those to commo cause commotion. But what but about uh, information the, suggesting that the, the, uh, the results that have actually ended up mm. re-electing President Yoweri Museveni mm. are essentially a reflection, mm. not of the will of the people, but the individual who announces the results. No, no. Then and those people who actually count the vote. Then that becomes another matter of discussion as to the getting win, the, 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 as how, whether our elections are genuine or not. We can have another one hour sometime. You can invite us. Really? But I will tell you, he has been, for example, recently, there are some constituencies, the opposition has won. They went to Kanungu, they won. Parliamentary, they went, yeah, parliamentary, yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah but the presidency. it's all about democracy. Then they won. Why they, if, if it was about cheating, you know, you not have won those constituencies in, in Wijiri, in Arua, but the democracy works. It works. Uh, now, on your issue, really, that's about President Seven. There is that fear that if you cannot win him on the ballot, what do you do? <laughs> Cause instability so that people think there is a crisis in the country. Who controls the institutions of violence? The, 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 maybe you should ask me, 
about management of demonstrations in Uganda, mm -hmm. uh, which, which I thought the viewers may <laughs> like to know. <laughs> which we have which was know. introduced to tie people, you know, to tie the opposition's hands behind their backs. The candle, yeah. Okay, I am here to tell you that that law, go and read it, re relating to management of public uh, 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 associations mm -hmm. and demonstrations, is more or less a replica of the American law here. Which is? Here, you, you, the, and the import is that if you are to have a demonstration, you must seek permission. Mm. And they give you, here in the United States, they give you a license. And to do so, you have to go to police, tell them, how are you going to demonstrate? I think what there you are, are right. Like, what are the placards? I what think there you are right. Even the architect, in fact, of that bill actually was my friend, yes. former Ugandan Prime Minister, Amama Mbabazi. Uh -huh. And he says it was not meant to be, for example, implemented or interpreted the way it actually works. But let's go to common sense, which is about that law that you are going to demonstrate. What we have been witnessing by some of our political leaders, because of the ultra motive, they want to pass through commercial districts. The Honorable here was in Sauriaco, and he knew what it meant. Was in Sauriaco running battles with police, and people get their things looted, get your things destroyed mm -hmm. and government is saying look let's talk with you you tell us where how are you going to, pro to do your processions <coughs> and it is managed properly mr ambassador there is, a saying, commotion. there is a saying that uh, the greatest friend of the truth is time mm. her greatest enemy is ignorance and all prejudice mm. while her constant companion is humility Bobby Wine. Yes, please. What makes you tick? What do you stand for? We're talking about President Museveni and Uganda. What about you? What is your vision for Uganda, really? Well, um, unfortunately, I've not gotten an opportunity to um, respond to what uh, the ambassador is saying, but um, in the interest of time, I'll go straight to your question. Um, I'm here, first and foremost, not to speak only for the opposition, but for the people of Uganda. For your information, Mr. Ambassador, I'm not representing any particular party. I'm representing the people of Uganda, especially my generation. The generation you clearly do not understand. The generation you are clearly very disconnected with. The same people that suffer from the outcomes of your pathetic decisions that you make. You say that um, we are opposition who are there to cause chaos. I will remind you that for all chaotic incidences that have happened, they only happen when the president comes. We were in Bujiri peacefully campaigning until the president showed up, and that's when they started beating people and arresting everybody. We were campaigning peacefully in Arua until President Museveni showed up. And indeed, we did not uh, meet him. Many of us were attacked in our own hotels. So you realize that he only shows up, and that's when uh, trouble begins. You talked about uh, uh, public order management, but I will remind you that in Uganda, a murder case can happen, and it will take hours before the police shows up. Um, firefighters take hours before they show up, but if there is a gathering that is meant to, for people, even if it's young people, to discuss the future of their country. Mm. The police and the military is going to show up in two minutes. It's evident. Yesterday in Kamocha, young people were discussing the future of their country, and the military police and police showed up and started beating them. That is the Uganda that we are living in. Unfortunately, I will not quote Nobat Mao for him again. He doesn't <laughs> seem to <laughs> like the quotations, but those are my words. 
So, I mean, those are not my words. Those so, are is words. there really any space uh, in which you can operate? Because I was talking to a very senior government official. Yeah. And I was asking him about how come you only have one president since 1986? That's the same question. And that you know what he said? No. He said, Shaka, to be very honest with you off the record, in Uganda, you cannot attempt to develop an appetite for the highest office in the land. We are told that it's dangerous. Um, it's 80% of Ugandans that have never seen another president. Is it because I personally was only four years when he came to power. Is it because his supporters argue that uh, he is a uniquely gifted individual to the extent, in fact, that uh, he may probably be a political god is a gift for Uganda. Well, yeah. that's that's uh, what the own hungers of every dictator say I until he falls. Mobutu had such people. Um, Mugabe had such people. Idi Amin Gaddafi, <laughs> they all had intelligent professors and Bokasa. doctors. Bokasa. and all the, they had intelligent Saddam people Hussein. spread in the beautiful Marcos. cities. Thank you very much. They all were praising him until the last day. So it does not surprise me to see a very educated, a very knowledgeable ambassador here promoting what is wrong. Anyway, to come back to your question about what I stand for, I stand for freedom. If some of us, especially, I, I'm sorry, but I speak so much for my generation. If we were born in a country that has no constitution, it would be OK. But we read in the first article of our constitution and says power belongs to the people. Some people that are calling you a Muhozi foreign project. I don't work for anybody. I work for Uganda. I was born in the ghetto. I was raised in the ghetto. And God helped me through the support of my people that I'm sitting um, in the studios of Voice of America today. So it is that voice that I will raise without fear or favor, no matter who it hurts. Would so, that mean perhaps that uh, the Mohozi project is legitimate as far as Uganda is concerned? Our aspirations are far bigger than Mohozi. Our aspirations maybe, maybe. are far bigger than the lucky few. We are the unlucky few. Maybe. The girls that I grew up with die every day giving birth. The boys that I grew up with are incarcerated in jails, spending four or five years without seeing a judge. They go, day, they go a day without a decent meal. These are the people that are unemployed. Those are the and people that are Unfortunately, time happens not to be our best ally. But On that note, we thank our distinguished guests, Robert Sentamu Chagurani, also known as Bobby Wine, and Ambassador Maru Sebuja Katende, plain potential extraordinary. Thanks to our field stations, along with our viewers and listeners, for many of our Voice of America radio affiliates, learning English is coming up next. And tomorrow morning is Daybreak Africa with James Pate. On behalf of the Voice of America, thanks for tuning into Straight Talk Africa. In the meantime, get better, not better, Uganda. And please remember to keep the African hopes alive.